So in this video we're going to see how to install PostgreSQL using docker as a docker container and also later we'll see how to integrate it with pgadmin which is a standard web UI for managing and monitoring PostgreSQL. So if you want to learn more about this, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. In this video, we're going to see how to install PostgreSQL as a Docker container and also we'll see the integration of it with the PG admin doing all these with a single Docker Compose file. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see, I've prepared a Docker Compose file in which I have two services which is the Postgres and the PG admin. So I've given the container the name Postgres, which is using the image Postgres 13.0 Alpine. And it has the environment variables passed to it, which is going to declare its initial database name, the username, which I passed the root as the username, and the Postgres password, which is a random password that I've passed to it which can be all any other values that you want for your case and also I've passed the pg data and a path so I want the pg data to be created and modified in this exact same path so I'll be able to mount a volume to exactly the same path to map the data that the PostgreSQL creates to the host machine so the data will be able to persist it and won't be lost if ever the container gets removed or gets down by any reason. So the port that I'm mapping so I'll be able to access it from the outside is the 15432 to the 5432 which is the default port for the PostgreSQL which will be running inside the container and lastly the restart policy is unless stopped so basically the docker engine will try to restart this container if ever by any reason it will be stopped and so my next service is the pg admin with the container name that I passed as the pg admin the image will be dpage pg admin i'll put the docker hub links down below so you'll be able to access the both official images docker hub page so you'll be able to read the readme about these containers and see all the available tags and use the tag name for your use case so as we can see also in the official docker hub page the PG admin for is a web-based administration tool for the PostgreSQL database. Also in here, you can see the available tags, the last push date of them, and you'll be able to find the stable versions and use them accordingly to your situation. So in order to download any of these tags of the images, you'll simply hit the copy icon over here and in your terminal you'll be able to paste them and the specific tag of that specific image will start downloading or simply using docker compose if you hit docker compose up which we'll see later in this video the necessary images which are mentioned inside the docker compose file will be automatically first downloaded and then they'll be up and running so Back to the PG admin service, I pass the default email and default password in order to be able to log in to the PG admin web UI and the volumes that I've mapped into it is a JSON file which includes the Postgres server information so the PG admin will be initially set those servers for me without the need for me to manually go and set the Postgres services that I want to manage using this pg admin service. And also the 
uh, ports that I've mapped to the outside so I'll be able to access it using the web browser is again 15433 map to the port 80 inside the container which is the default port for the pg admin to expose its web ui again the restart policy is exactly the same and in here i want to add another field which is depends on and i want to pass the postgre service name uh, it's going to complain because the value must be an array so i'll be able to use it like this so basically the depends on will enable us to say to the docker engine that we want this exact service to be depended on the service that we mentioned in here so basically it will be up and running whenever the postgre service is up so this will be able to make the connection to that service so i'm going to hit save and next up we have the servers json file which i'm going to explain it right ahead in here basically we have a json file in which we can declare our postgre services so i've passed the name and the group which is the default group which will be existing by default in the pg admin and the host i've passed postgres because the network that the docker will be creating to the both of these containers will be same and they'll be able to see each other by their service names so basically the postgres will eventually resolve to the ip of the postgre service that we have in the same docker compose file and the port will be exactly the same which is the postgre service is running inside the docker and the rest of the configurations that i'll put the link down below if you want to learn more about these so the only thing that i need to say in the terminal is docker compose up dash d so basically dash d will run it in a in the detached mode so my currently running bash session won't be occupied by this process and i'll be able to do other commands so i'll hit enter as we can see it has created a default network for the services inside this docker compose file and the services also get started successfully as we can see over here so for you it might take a little bit longer because it might need to first download the relevant images that you mentioned in your docker compose file but if you but if you have those but if you have those images in your machine it won't go ahead and download it and it'll use the images locally stored in your machine so the command that i can use is docker compose ps to list out the services that is running by the docker compose.yaml file existing over here so i can see that the pg admin is up postgre also up and if i hit ls i'll see in here that a postgres directory has been created because i mounted the dot slash postgres directory inside the data slash data slash postgres inside the container so basically if i hit ls postgres uh, i'll get permission error because i have got some issues with my locally running docker service so i'll say sudo su to become sudo user if i cd into postgres if i hit ls and in here I'll see that all the relevant files for the Postgre service has been stored and mapped to this exact same directory and the data has successfully persisted as we'll see up in the video if we restart or remove the containers and bring them back again we'll see that the data will be still persisted in the newly created containers so i'll 
go to the browser to the localhost 15433 which is the port map to the pg admin in here it will request the username and password which i passed in the pg admin environment variables and if i pass my credentials it should redirect me inside the web ui so i'll be able to manage the postgres service so it might take a little bit while so inside the servers group which was as i mentioned the default group for the pg admin in here i'll try to list the servers inside it it will request the password for the root user of the postgres server so I'll, i'm going to copy paste it from over here i'll hit ok and now i am able to access the database server which is the database server running as docker container in the exact same docker compose file so if i expand the databases i'll see it has created a postgres database which i passed over here and in here i'll be able to hit right click create database i'll give it a name i'll hit save and i should be able to see it in the list of the databases over here if i expand it in here i see the schemas part and in here if i expand it i'll see the tables over here which is empty because i just created this schema so if i right click create table i'll pass a name in the columns section i'll hit plus I'll pass id as the name of this column the data type will be begin not null and the primary key i'll hit edit button over here in the constraints tab i'll make it an identity so i'll be able to have it as the auto increment field i'll hit plus to create another column and I'll make it a var chair, which is named character varying in here, and also I'll make it not null, and I'll hit save. In the tables section, I see that my TBL1 has been created. Right click, view edit all rows. I see there there is no data in it, and if I want to create some rows i'll hit the save data changes if i hit it and in here i see that the id automatically assigned one and i'll try to create another one i'll pass the value again hit it and in here i see that the auto increment field has been created and working correctly so the last thing that i'm going to do in here i'll go back to the terminal i'll say docker compose down to stop and remove the containers also the network that has been created for this docker compose and if i say docker compose ps i'll see that there is no more running containers so again i'll hit ls over here i'll see the directory back again ls i see my postgres directory still exists over here and if i say docker compose up d i'll hit enter and wait and wait for my containers to be up and running and it is good to mention that we have the docker compose logs to access the logs of the running containers again if i hit docker compose ps i'll see that both my containers are running and if i hit refresh over here to refresh my web ui again it will require me to log in so after i log in i'll try to expand the servers tab and i'll pass in my password in the databases i see i have the like it database 
already existing over here and it didn't got deleted and as a result it got persisted in my file system and if the docker container gets removed by any reason and bring back up again the databases and the tables and the rows inside it will be persisted and won't be lost so if i check the tables we have the tbl1 right click view edit all rows and in here i have the rows that i created before i removed the containers so that's all for this video i hope you liked the content and you learned something new from this if you have any questions if you have any recommendations just go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below and also don't forget to watch my other videos that i have in my channel i've got playlists for various tools and also in the upcoming videos we'll see about the high availability of postgres so tune in to not to miss them and don't forget to like and subscribe and with that i hope to see you in the next videos